What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a wonderful, wonderful day here. And um, I've been, it's been crazy. Oh my God. Um, you ever have something that you think is going to be easy to do and then it ends up being a freaking nightmare? That was today. I had a refrigerator that went out and uh, people said, oh, we know there's one in the garage and stuff. And then it ended up being it was a bigger one that would fit in the front door. So we took the door off and things and the door off the refrigerator and then it had the door with the ice maker and everything in there so you couldn't unplug all the wiring for that so we had to kind of try and work it in there and then the interior door was too narrow too so we had to literally rip out the door frame and then we go to put in the cabinet is too low so we, we literally had like every freaking problem in the world something that you thought would be an hour ended up being six hours and man i'm tired i'm hangry and you know, I do a lot of thinking here, and this is this is what's funny to me because people don't understand what social media is. Okay, you are developing a relationship basically with me. Okay, the difference of traditional media is is they're just broadcasting to you. It's almost like it's a one way thing. Here on YouTube and social media, it's actually a two way street. You know. I, I, I deliver to you guys, you bring back, back and forth. It's a two-way conduit, and that's different than traditional media. You know, when you see the newspaper, it's just a newspaper. You can't go ahead and respond. Well, you can do the crossword puzzle, but you're not responding to them, especially not in real time. And some people, oh, my Lord, it's crazy how they micromanage everything that you say and do and so forth. Yes, I'm talking to you, 49er fan, Jason. Yes, I am talking to you. You know, bro, if my style and delivery and the way I present my ideas, my thoughts, my feelings, myself, if you don't like me being emotional about my team and so on, if those things bother you, don't watch. You don't have to, especially since you're a 40 Winer fan. You ought to worry about your team going out there and getting everybody and being loaded and failing in the Super Bowl. Yes, as opposed to what Mark Holmes is doing on a Cowboys content creation channel. I welcome you to be here and all that, but if you don't like it, don't keep whining and bitching and sending me an email every day about this, that, and the other. Just leave it in the comments like everybody else. So I was sitting here thinking, since he was commenting about how I am just a Dak Prescott fan and that I really don't like the Cowboys. Yeah, that's why I've got all the Cowboys paraphernalia and stuff in here. You actually, I don't think you can actually find anything right here that is uh, uh, Dak Prescott. There's nothing. Actually, there's, there's nothing here at this house. Other, oh, no, there is. Actually, I'm a liar. Uh, Dak, Dak Prescott's jersey that's been on since 2016 of Joe Boo is, is there. That, there's that. Okay, that's the only thing. Be that as it may, I started thinking and uh, while I was working and going through all of this hell with this refrigerator about... Cam Newton. And here's what's interesting is Cam Newton started talking about on Club Shay Shay. Shout out to Shannon Sharp, Sharp, you know. Shannon Sharp has said something that will I will go to the grave with, which is every day you are writing your eulogy. Let's listen to what Cam Newton had to say about contracts and problems they're having in playoffs and about how he needs to be a dog. Because they find themselves in a very similar situation to where they were four years ago. Uh -huh. Dak Prescott going into the final year of his contract. Yeah. That time they, they, they franchised him, made the play on a franchise tag, thought about franchising again, we gave him a long-term deal. So here we are again. What is it that Dak needs to do? What is it that Dak hasn't done to convince the Cowboys? Because 
clearly they're not convinced. Mm -hmm. Because Jerry said it after, we're only going to go as far as Dak carry us, and this was as far as he could carry us. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing from Dak? What's, what's going on with Dak? What's going on with the Cowboys offense that in big games, he doesn't play his best? This message is to uh, Dak Prescott. We looking for that dog. And I don't think Jerry Jones they, they, will allow they, him to they become cut that. It, of course. He said, because you got to be humping. politically correct. You got to be the, almost the president of football almost to be the signal caller for the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. Mm-hmm. What Dallas Cowboys need at that at, at that quarterback position is somebody to say, no, nah, f*** that. <laughs> yeah. This my sh This is what we going to do. I, I hear all that. But we're trying to win. We're trying to win, yes or no. Okay, cool. Now unleash me and let me win this football game. That type of aura, I don't think that can be that. No. Because Jerry wants to win his way. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So those are going to be very combative forces that I don't know if they can get to that next level. I know a guy that played quarterback that didn't win nearly as much. Dak probably has won more playoff games than him, and he never had to worry about a contract. The guy that Dak Come on, uh. came after. That's what I'm saying. I, I, oh. I mean, did, am I missing? For the people, that was, we keeping it a buck now. Who are you talking about? So, uh, so, so the people that know. All I know is Tony Romo was made the highest paid quarterback in football with no Super Bowl, mm. no uh, NFC Championship games, mm. no first team All Pro, no mm. second team All Pro. Mm. He ain't he ain't never had to worry about a contract. And when he's done playing, he gets a deal <laughs> that nobody else gets. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave that right there. So when we heard Dak Prescott in the uh, press conference yesterday with the uh, cancer event that he was doing. And we got Spicy Dak, who seemed to be a little bit of, you know, I'm not worried about being the highest paid necessarily. You know, I'm not afraid of not being here. Are we beginning to get the dog in Dak? Let, let's listen to, to this press conference this all season's been different than every other time you've been here just the the lack of free agent activity and and more of your own guys leaving it, it, are you a little puzzled by that based on what you'd seen in previous years uh i don't want to say i'm puzzled uh obviously i do i understand i'm, just, I'm focused well, on actually, the guys that we have and we got he a lot knows. of great guys a lot of the joe's not gonna do shit he's that, not that's puzzled about it. In that, that, locker room and I say good but but great and young guys that are good that are making that next step so um, obviously have faith in those guys done always done well in the draft and, and bringing some guys in so um, hopefully that'll make a big impact and why is Claire right so now, close me, it's about just focusing on the locker room and pouring into those guys and, and what is he looking at I don't control that that side and making those moves so i um, not going to put too much thought and, and and angst into it I guess and, and what we're doing and how we're getting that done rather than just uh, how I can invest in the guys and make sure that they're getting better and holding myself accountable to do the same. Would you like your deal done by the start of the season? Um, I, honestly uh, I'm focused on the moment on the now. Uh, if the talks begin and, mm. and real talks get to happen, uh, real talks. Sure we, we can talk about getting that done uh, but in this case right now honestly I'm worried about just Getting better, being better tomorrow than I am at this moment. So, uh, leaving leaving that up to, to my agent and, and and Jerry at this point. And when those talks begin, um, I'll be more involved, obviously. So, so no talks. Have, are you surprised that no talks have happened? No, I mean I've been in conversation. I've talked to Jerry, and so I understand where we are, obviously. And Jerry's mentioned the same. So there's not any gray area in that okay. sense. So, uh, yeah. You and uh, he talked to you about the cap and all the situations and why they're not. We had a great conversation. Okay. We had a great conversation that put us aligned and 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 where we are and moving forward and okay. or where we are in this moment, right. I should say. And uh, we'll address moving forward as as, as that comes about. C D situation. Are you working with C D? <laughs> One at a time, remember? That's your, that's your contract, but with C D and, and uh, for business reasons not being out there, do you two still work off on the side? How do you conduct that when he's at this stage of negotiations? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, we'll get some work in. Uh, I've, I've been in communications with CD. Uh, that, that's that's there. Um, so, yeah, we'll get work in, and wh whether it's 
him getting in the getting into the facility, maybe maybe a deal gets done, and if it doesn't, um, I guarantee that we still find a lot of time to make sure that we're putting in the work that uh, we feel comfortable. The contract for a franchise quarterback for any team, it's a big financial piece around which a club can build. How much the value is is obviously relevant to that. For third contracts, different people have different philosophies. Do you want to be the highest paid quarterback in the league? Do you view it differently? What's your philosophy toward it? Yeah, no, I'm not trying to be the highest paid. Uh, Necessarily, um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll w w wait till negotiations began, mm -hmm. and, and um, obviously want to put this team in the best situation. So, have your feelings changed at all about your desire to be wanting to be in Dallas mm -hmm. past 2025? No, I'm I'm focused on, on on here right now, where I am. That's always how I've been. Uh, you can mm -hmm. anytime you've asked me, it's always been about right now, um, getting better tomorrow. And I've been in this situation before, so. It's okay. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and in any situation at that point, betting on myself or playing this year out. And, uh, yeah. So your talks, what, so your talks with Jerry. The day, get a good one. Okay, okay. <laughs> trying, so your talks with Jerry, you say that that is my fears that my future is here. That's your fears? What, your fears. I don't have any fears. So you, you believe you'll be here forever. Woo. Playing, based on your t conversations with Jerry. Uh, I'm not going to say I fear. Okay. Being here or not, I don't. I don't fear either situation. Right. No to fear. To be candid with you, I love this game and and love to play and love to better myself as a player and my teammates around me. Um, right now, it's with the Dallas Cowboys. It's where I want to be and that's where I am and that's the focus. And after the season, we'll see where we're at. And if the future holds that, then if not, we'll go from there. Did, did one one quick question: Can you address the losses at all or or anything regarding that? Just can we have. We, we can leave right there. So you see how Dak, who has always been politically cor correct and, of course, towing the company line for the Cowboys, is definitely a little spicy. And when you think about what Cam Newton basically said, you know, he needs to be that dog and basically say, this is my mother humping shit. And we're going to go ahead and get we going to go ahead and win it. Or maybe we just going to go ahead and say, I'm going to go someplace else to do it because there ain't no time like the present. And um, as far as that contract goes, they do have a point about where they were with Tony Romo. Wasn't any problems like this. It wasn't literally where he had to, Tony had to prove himself year after year after year and get franchise tagged and so on. But anyway, what do I know? I'm a guy with a day job at a voodoo doll messing around with trying to get a refrigerator in a house. That's some shit there. Peace. They run. They laugh. I see the glow shining in their eyes. Oh, God.